Hey y'all, it's Kimbu, and this is going to be a short video. I'm going over one of the terms I use in personal projects management method, and that particular term today is tools. Very fancy of me, yeah? What do I mean when I specifically say tools? The tools that I refer to are anything you use to organize and be productive in your life. And that can be a notepad, it can be a paper planner, it can be an app on your phone or tablet, it can be a service that you subscribe to such as Asana or Trello, it could be a database system, it could be your Excel spreadsheet. Anything you're using to track the projects that you're working on, to schedule your time, a tool that a lot of people don't think of as a tool is their calendar. Well, again, whether it's a paper calendar, you know, you have it in front of you on, on your desk, or if you use a digital calendar like I do, I use Google Calendar, plenty of digital calendars out there. I think I'm probably actually going to migrate to Vivaldi calendars. I love the Vivaldi browser, as anybody who knows me knows. Shout out to Vivaldi browser. You guys are awesome. But anything that you're using that is an important part of your process is a tool. For instance, I use the Notion database and I use the Notion database to track things like the books that I'm publishing. So I have a database specifically set up in there that has all the titles that I'm working on, whether they are actually published, are in the stage of being written, or if they're just an idea I plan to get you down the road. And there's lots of columns of data about where they're published, when they were published, how many words they are. So this is a database of information for project tracking for me. It is a tool, it is something I use as part of the personal projects management method. I think one of the things that people get really hung up on is are the tools that they're using. And that's not really your fault if, you, if that's you. Um, we've been sold the idea that there should be a perfect way to do something. And that perfect way is changing all the time. Uh, I remember when the get, the get Things Done method first hit ages ago, early 2000s, and it... Was it the early 2000s? Was it before that? I need to look that up, shouldn't I? Anyway, when it hit, uh, it, it hit it hard. Like, everybody was using the Get Things Done system. Um, and there have been other systems that come along along the way. Kanban became very popular, and now we have actual project management systems like Asana and Monday. Um, we have multiple, hundreds, dozens, I don't know how many versions of day planners out there that you can buy. Some are inspirational, some are motivational, some are very niche. Like as an author, I know of probably, you know, sit down and I recognize at least five different types of planners that were designed for authors. So how to track your books, how to track your time, all that sort of thing. So all of these things though, there's so many of them. And the reason that there's so many of them is because there's no one thing that can do it all. And I, I don't care what you've been promised. It's not gonna work out that way. And I think you know that, why would you be watching these videos if you didn't? Because they haven't worked for you the way that they were promised. There's always a catch. There's always something you can't do in that system. You can only do somewhere else. There's always things that need to be measured in different ways than you can do on that app or that paper planner. Why I have a Notion database for all my books and book tracking. It originally used to be a spreadsheet, a digital spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet, and that just got to be too cumbersome and there was no way for me to really sort. And, and so I, I went with Notion for that. But that is, all that information is, I could probably set that up in Asana and, and or, or uh, MS Project, but why? Like, I, this works for me, this database, the columns that I have, the, the, the way that I've set up the data, the way that I can look at different views of it. Like that's how my brain works. My brain likes that. That's what I'm going to use. That's the tool I'm going to use. So it's important to understand that when you start using the PPM method, 
you don't have to give up the tools that work for you. You don't have to give up your notepad. You don't have to, me, it's my daily list. I've talked about it so many times in other videos, my little Bujo style uh, daily list, that to-do list that I use in that planner because I like writing things down. So for me, I can't give that up. I don't care what system, how perfect the system you hand me to do things with, I can't. Instead, I'm providing you a method, a technique to use with all of the tools that you have and that you like and that work with your brain. So remember, as you're going through and, it, and you're just starting with PPM, that the tools you use are okay. They're fine. Whatever you're using, that's fine. I'm not going to ask you to change it. You might decide you want to change it, but if those are your tools, that's great. Tools are so many different things to so many different people, and I'm not here to decide for you which tools would be best for you to use. Personally, I think that's one of the strengths of PPM. I think it's, uh, you know, what makes it really special and unique out there in the productivity world. You know, I'm not trying to sell you, you know, the, the one true PPM journal method system app thing. I am just trying to give you a way to use your tools more productively than you're using them now in ways you may not have even realized that you could use them. So that's what tools are in the personal projects management method. And if you have any questions, of course, email me at Kim Boo, K I M B O at task mistress.com. Do not forget the dash. I hammer this one home. Do not forget the dash. There's a little, little thing on the card there in the corner. And of course I'll have the link in the show notes to this video. Ask me any questions you have about the method, um, about PPM, how you think it might help you, questions you have about what constitutes a tool. If it's a good tool, bad tool, I think only you can determine that, but I'm more than happy to answer any questions you may have. So thanks for joining me on this short video and hope it helps you as you dig into the PPM method. Have a great day.